Getting high quality data is paramount for good machine learning outcomes. But public data sets aren't always suitable for custom use cases. So how can you get your data labeled efficiently without spending days in front of the computer? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufeng Guo, and on this episode, we're going to take a look at the Cloud AI Platform Data Labeling Service and see how it can help you create labeled data sets that you can use to train machine learning models. While you should always try to collect data in such a way that the labels are known at the time of collection, that isn't always possible especially in the case of, say, crowdsourced data or unstructured data like images and video or text, labeling your data after collecting it might be necessary. The data labeling service lets you work with human labelers to create labels for data that you can then use to train machine learning models. Let's learn a little bit more about how this system works. Say you've collected a representative data set that you want to classify or analyze, and you're ready to try out creating a data labeling task. What does it take? Let's dive in. The data labeling service has three core resources that it uses to define a labeling task, data sets, label sets, and instructions. You'll need all three in order to create a labeling task for your data. Now let's look at each of these in turn. The dataset resource is, of course, your dataset. It's represented as a CSV file on Google Cloud Storage. Each row of the CSV file points to an individual element of data. For instance, if you have a bunch of images, each row is a GCS path to an image file. For text data, each row should be a path to a text file. In addition to the CSV file, you'll also need to give the dataset a name and select the data type, images, video, or text. Once you've created your data set, you'll need to create your label set. A label set is the set of labels you want your human labelers to use to label your images. Each label set can contain up to 100 labels. You can mix and match data sets with different label sets depending on what model you're trying to train, or you might even use the same label set for several different data sets. Try to avoid using labels whose meanings might overlap as this can confuse labelers. It is also worth noting that you can have a label called neither and both, which might be useful especially in, say, classification scenarios. Once you have a data set and corresponding label set created, it's time to create some instructions for your labelers. Here's some tips for making great instructions. First up, remember that labelers don't have your domain knowledge, so make sure your instructions are easy enough to understand. Secondly, be sure to include a list of all of your possible labels with a description of each label. And third, in your instructions, include examples for every single label, making sure to give at least three positive examples and at least one negative example, covering different kinds of cases. Fourth, clarify as many edge cases as you can. For example, with, say, bounding boxes and images, be sure to state whether a partially covered item should be included and how tightly that bounding box needs to be drawn. The system requires that you submit PDF instructions, so be sure to have some way to output to PDF. There's lots of ways to do this. One option that I would recommend is to just write it up in Google Slides or Google Docs and save as PDF. Now that we've created a data set, label set, and instructions, we're ready to bring them all together to create a labeling task. The data labeling service supports many different types of labeling tasks. For image data, you can do six different types of labeling. There's classification, bounding boxes, oriented bounding box, bounding polygon, polyline tasks, or segmentation tasks. For video data, the data labeling service supports classification, object detection, object tracking, and events. Now, finally, for text labeling, the service supports classification, classification with sentiment, and finally, entity extraction. I want to close this video with some tips for success and common questions about the data labeling service. There's always a concern about how to ensure high labeling quality. One way to ensure the best labeling quality possible is to request multiple human labelers to annotate each piece of your data. 
In cases where there is disagreement on labeling, additional opinions from the other labelers are gathered until there's a consensus or the maximum number of labelers have been reached. Let's take a look at an example. Say we chose to have three labelers. For image classification tasks, all three labelers will classify each image, and the majority vote will decide the final answer. For image bounding box tasks, the first labeler will draw the box, and the second labeler then can verify them. If the second labeler disagrees and makes edits, continue on to the third one to get kind of a majority opinion. Another potential area of questions is around who will label my data. All datasets are labeled by officially onboarded subprocessors, and you can find out more information and all the details at the GCP data processing and security terms. Anytime you're transmitting data, the security and protection of that data is paramount. It's worth noting that all data stored in Google Cloud is already encrypted by default, both in transit and at rest. Human labelers can only view your data during labeling. The data labeling service is also HIPAA compliant, so for those of you working with sensitive healthcare data, rest assured that it will be handled in a proper manner. One final tip, ramp up your data labeling jobs incrementally. Start your first labeling job with a small amount of data, then see whether the results are what you expect. You can then revise your instructions and then create subsequent jobs and iterate until you feel comfortable sending larger and larger quantities of data to be labeled. This will help you get high quality results and make the best use of your budget, both in terms of time and money. I hope this was a useful overview of the data labeling service and how you can get going with it. And even if you don't need to use a data labeling service, these tenants of label creation and instructions are important for creating accurate data sets for your machine learning training. As always, I've linked a number of useful resources down in the description below. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, click that like button and be sure to subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, check out the data labeling service and create your first labeling task today. I look forward to seeing you next time on AI Adventures. Thank you.